Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Siren. We're now continuing on with a new character, someone we haven't seen before. But before we do that, let's head to the archive, because I believe... Yeah. First of all, let's stop these from flashing, just to make sure that we've looked at them. We have seen these before. It's just bothering me that these two items... Nope, that's not the button. That these two items are still flashing in the archive. Of course, this was the, the very up-close-and-personal interview with Naoko. Okay, the actual archive item that we picked up last time that we didn't take a look at is Book of Deliverance, Chaos at the End of Time. After Kiyoya ran out of the church where uh, Hisako took him, we got this added to the archive. Let's see what this is about. Uh, so it's about how the people of uh, Hanada see perhaps how the apocalypse is going to go. Let's see. The earth shall shake, the winds roar, the skies weep, and pests rise. The souls of men shall be tainted with rot, and the waters shall be dyed red with the blood of the king of gods. The souls of those who touch the red waters shall return to their original body and rise from the grave. Well, of course, this is all just superstitious nonsense. Nothing like that is going to happen around here. We won't even give that a second thought. What we will give a second thought to is that we are now going to start a new character, Key, or maybe Ke. I'm not sure how you would pronounce that name. Let's just call him Makino. Let's just call him that, because I'm not sure how to pronounce the first name. We're starting off with him, actually two hours before where we last saw Kiyoya, because I think the last time we saw Kiyoya, it was 7 a.m. in the church. Now we're heading back two hours to 5 a.m. with Makino. It is Arco. Where is everyone? What's this? Our mission, as it usually is, is to get across this area and try to get to a, maybe a safer area. However, we see that this fellow seems to have just, uh, experience sight jacking and he is not feeling well for it let's take a look at who we got all right key key again i'm not sure makino he's a, a spiritual guide and i think in the last cutscene, uh, hisako did mention to kiyoya that they were waiting for who she called leader makino so apparently he is a man of some influence in the village. Let's see what he's got on him. Nothing. No items, no weapons. He is completely defenseless. So, he's defenseless. He has no one to help him. He's on his own. So, let's see what we need to do here. Let's, let's look around and try to sight Jack. Alright, we see a gardener. But I don't think he actually moves from where he's gardening, so let's keep looking. Alright, here's someone. Gonna tag him. So, up oh, someone else, who saw me for an instant. And he's hammering on a wall. So we'll tag him. We want to keep track of him. There's someone else walking around, patrolling in the direction that I'm standing, but... Okay, he's got a gun. Someone's staring at a bridge that has crumbled. Now that, this area with the phone might look a little familiar. It's because we've been here before. This is where the level where uh, Kiyoya met Hisako happened. This was the tutorial level, where Kiyoya f had fallen into this river, this red river, and he got out and met Hisako around here. We have to follow the same path they did and get to the same place they did because we're heading towards the church just like they were. However, one thing I didn't point out yet is that we actually do have a map as we're going through here. It's not 
that helpful because it doesn't actually show where we are. It shows us checkpoints, landmarks, like the start, where those arrows are, the bridge, Rakugu's house, the tobacco shop, the cafeteria, the rice shop, the fire tower, the fire shack, Ishikawa's house, the barber shop, the bus stop, and our objective, getting to Karawari. Now, we know where we are because we're at the start. However, once we actually get out into the, into the area, into the level, we won't actually know where we are unless we can keep, keep our bearings. And in the upper center, you can see sort of a grid of... That's, like, that's 10 squares, and we're sort of in the lower part of the grid. Uh, it's lit up yellow. So those are the areas, the levels, that we can travel around in the game. So the different characters will be in different levels. And this is the first uh, time we've done the same level. Tw twice? Hold on, someone saw me. Hold on, let me see if I can... Alright, this, this is the one who saw me. He's coming. Oh, I thought he would stop. He did not stop. If he, if they don't see me for long enough, they'll stop. But no. Okay. So so much for stealth. We're ha we're gonna have to just run up these stairs and hope that the second one is not actually looking right at me when I do this. Uh, let's try running back here and hoping that this is long enough. Okay. I think he lost me, or she, doesn't see me anymore. Yeah. Alright, she's gonna continue on her normal patrol, not knowing where I am. Again, I have no weapons. I have no way of fighting back. All I can do is hide behind a corner and wait till it's safe. So it's a pretty dangerous area. You may have noticed that the bridge across the river has collapsed. So you would think that if it wasn't, we could walk across that to get out of this village, out of Hanuda, Hanuda. But uh, the exit's gone. No way out. There's someone right on the other side of the fence. And they have a gun. And they're looking right in this direction. <laughs> Alright, they're starting to turn away. But this one's sort of... This one is still looking in my direction. I don't... It might be too far away to actually see me. You can actually see a, a Shibito up close. Okay, it's turned away. That'll be... That'll be my cue to get out, I think. All right. All right, so that did not start off as well as it could have. But, I mean, that's... It's Siren. It'd be a little boring, I think, if all of this was done perfectly. And we're not capture the Siren experience of constantly being in danger of being noticed by Shibito. All right, now... It, you might not recognize the path, but I'm taking the same path Akiyoya and Hisako took to get to the bus stop, which is what they climbed up on to get out of here. We can stop, though, and take a look at some things that they didn't. For example... I can open this door. I don't think it was open when Kiyoya was around. Alright, let's take a respite in here, and hopefully no one hears us. See if we can find anything useful. The freezer's not working. Well... I, that's because it's not plugged in. Of course it's not gonna work. If it's not plugged in the wall. There, now it's working. Let's see what, uh, what delectables might be kept in the freezer. Uh, apparently whatever was in there went bad. 
but at least the freezer is working in case we need to freeze something. But this won't open. And we got an archive item. Let's take a look at what we just got. What information will this give us about the situation? These are still flashing. Hold on. I really want these to stop flashing. They, they got to stop flashing. All right. This is what we just picked up. Let's see. It's a, it's a bulletin from July 1976. Considering this game takes place in 2003, that's, this has been lying around for a while. But it says that the Arato and Harayadori areas will be renamed to Upper Arato 1 through 4 and Lower Arato 1 through 3. I think the only news here is that for some reason this thing has been lying around since 1976. It doesn't seem to really be telling us else anything useful. Oh, there's a faucet and it is still working. However, there's nothing we can do with it. But it might be useful to remember that we could get some water from here if we need it. And there's a freezer. All of these things should be useful if we're resourceful enough. But for right now, we can't do anything with that. All right, there's no one there. Let's keep walking across. However, if we remember last time, there was someone looking around this garden area. And this time, there's someone working here. They're very caught up in their work, though. And I don't think they turn around, so let's just sneak by, and we should be okay. Not all of the Shibuto want to kill us. Some of them are just, you know, tending their crops. You saw one that was hammering on a wall. Speaking of which, where is that one? And he's still hammering. Oh, and there's one actually that's looking at the gardener right now. So actually there's one around this corner. But I don't I don't think it's looking at me. It's actually looking right at me. But it looks like they're walking away now. Yeah, there they are. Now, if we were to go over here, this bus stop, this is where Kiyoya and Hisako left. Yeah, the exit to safety is right up there. But like I've mentioned before, just completing the level is the easier part. The harder part is finding the secret objectives. So let's continue searching around. The Shibito is staring at what looks like a red cloth. And it looks like he's around here. It's one that's the one that's hammering on a wall. I'm not sure if he can see me if I were to walk through here. Oh, but what's this? There's a number on the wall. 0705. We can't examine it, but maybe we should remember that's there. I don't hear the hammering anymore. Hold on. All right, I think he's standing above me. He's just kind of staring at a red cloth. I think he's up, up there. I don't see him. Combination lock. Well, we just got... A combination, didn't we? Maybe we should try it out on this lock. Yep, four-digit lock. We saw a four-digit code on the wall. 0705. And it didn't work. That's not the combination. So let's just remember this number because maybe we can use it somewhere else. Ooh. 
No, okay, he saw me. Hey, how you doing? I am just gonna... Uh, let's see, did he see me run this way? Oh, uh, uh, okay, no, he was actually looking right at me, but I don't think he sees me. No, he doesn't know where I am. And it looks like he's calmed down. Yeah, he's going back to work. And this time he's standing right in front of me, so... I'm just gonna sneak by. What do you suppose he's working on, by the way? Why is he hammering that wall? Well, maybe we'll find out later. Did he stop? Oh, no, okay, good, he's still going. I'm not sure when he's gonna turn around, so... I think we'll make it. Weapons can be helpful. If only we had a revolver. This would be much easier. Alright, here's a door. Alright, hopefully we're okay and he won't hear us in here. No water. This faucet isn't working. There's a refrigerator, but it's not plugged in. I don't see a way to plug it in, so I guess we're at a loss there. If we need to freeze something up, we'll have to get all the way back to that freezer. I just like closing doors behind me. Just, just in case anyone hears me, there's one extra obstacle they have to open to get in here. But what's of interest is that there's a tape recorder, and there's some power left, so... Let's have a listen, why not? It surely won't attract anyone's attention. Well, we can't actually hear anything on the tape, it sounds like it's blank. And if- or if there is any noise, the background music is overpowering it. However, the time code on this uh, tape player does have four digits. We did see a four-digit number, didn't we? Maybe let's fast forward up to that point. Because, you know, it could be the case that maybe someone recorded something on this tape. And just to make sure that they didn't forget where it was, they painted the time code in big red numbers on the wall outside. That could happen if it was something really important. You just want to make sure that you remember where it is. It does take a little while to get there, though. Fortunately, none of the Shibito's paths will take them inside this house. They're all working outside. Unless, I, if I make any noise, they will come inside. Oh, they'll, they'll do that. They'll be happy to do that. But if I don't make any noise, then they'll ignore the house. But it looks like we're almost there. Five, four, five, seven. It said five, four, five, seven. Let's remember that number. And by the way, that number will change every time you play. The first number won't. 0705, that'll be the same. But the one on the tape, it is random. So you do have to go through this to get that number. And a new archive item. Let's see what it has to teach us. It's the first thing that we have under folklore pictures. It's a hanging scroll. No one knows who made it or where it, or when it comes from. It features the Midnight Pimpernel and figures gathered around a body of red water. The Midnight Pimpernel is referring to a flower that only blooms at night. And as far as red water goes, we have seen plenty of that in Hanada. There's no shortage of it. But now that we have that four-digit number, maybe we should try that combination lock again. 
And maybe I should just make sure I don't make too much noise, because that guy... He's still out there. Alright, so the combination we got is five, four, five, seven, and it worked. Now let's see what we're rewarded with. What treasures are contained inside? There's a towel. It's a face towel right there. I mean, you never know what you might need a towel for. Let's pick it up. We got it. We did it. What else is in here? There's a rope. Now, a rope its one of, one of humankind's most useful inventions. One of the most ancient and most useful. So let's pick up the rope. What could we... And look at that. We picked up the rope, and because of that, a mission that is going to take place two days later with this character, the second objective, has now been unlocked. Because he will have this rope when he gets there. But nothing happened when we picked up the towel... It's a cotton face towel, and here's a rope. It's sturdy enough to support one adult. Well, you know, at first, Makino seemed like the weakest character so far because he started this with no items, no weapons, and no one to help him. But at this point, I think you can probably say, of the characters we've played so far, he is the most prepared, because he's the only one who can say that he knows where his towel is. Now, what do we need to do with this? Well, first, let's sneak out. Is this guy still hammering? That guy is still hammering. Uh, so hopefully, he'll keep doing that. Yep, there he is. And let's see, is anyone coming this way? No, oh, no there is a flashlight. There is a flashlight. So I'll stand up so we can go a little faster and try to get behind here. And once I'm behind here, I'll have to start crouching again because of the gardener. Yeah, that gardener's still there. He's still working. He takes a lot of pride in his work, a lot of enjoyment. Spends all day there. All right, now where are we going, you might ask? Well, I'm trying to make my way back to the restaurant where the freezer was. Why would I want to do that? I mean, we couldn't do anything there the last time I, I was in there. Has anything changed since then? Oh, so much has changed. All right. All right, so now we're here, and you might be wondering, we picked up that towel. What could we do? possibly do with a towel? What would we need to do with a towel? I mean, I suppose we could soak it. You know, just run it under some water. We could do that. Alright, we have acquired wet face towel. And now, now everything has changed. The game has changed. I mean, there's not a whole lot you could do with a dry towel, but with a wet towel... The world is your oyster. There's so many options. So what do we do with a wet towel? Um, I mean, of all the things we could do with it, maybe we could just toss it in a freezer? We did it. And because we put the wet towel in a freezer, the second objective for a completely separate character at a different time has now been unlocked. How, you might ask? What could this other character possibly need with a frozen towel? I mean, I don't want to give away spoilers. So you'll, I guess you'll just have to wait till we get there. I mean, what, what can't you do with a frozen towel? There are so many applications. But now that we've done these things, I believe we have done everything that we can in this area. And now, Leader Makino can leave and head off towards the church where Hisako and Kyoya went and see if he can meet up with them. 
now that he's you know done his due diligence and uh, got a rope and froze a towel. We are just going to strut right on out of here. And let's head on out. Mission accomplished. We, got, we accomplished so much. Two hours later. Are you okay? Hey, this place is messed up. Let's just go to the church together. And, and then think about what to do. The dog's already dead anyway. I, I'm sorry, but we have to. Oh, Kyoya, obviously not a pet owner. Do not make light of the death of a pet, Kyoya. It's, it's a big deal. Now, so we can sort of see what happened after Kyoya was in the church at 7 a.m. and he heard someone scream, and it looks like it was this girl, Miyako Kajiro, uh, who, ha who, whose dog has just died. We don't know how. Maybe we could assume that it was killed by a Shibuto. But now she's gone off with Kyoya to head back to the church. And so we're going to save. And next time, we're going to continue on. I believe, as Kiyoya, as he introduces himself to Miyako, and they start trying to get back to the church for safety. I'll see you then.